Guys, what's going on? My name is John. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, this episode, I'm going to show you guys an exclusive first look at a game that we've been working on at Collector Vision Games called City Hunter and the Curse of the Mayans. Our intentions are to eventually port this game over to the NES, uh, to other platforms as well, including the Genesis, Sega CD, etc. Uh, but this is coming out for modern consoles. So it's going to be coming out for, uh, definitely, we have a Nintendo uh, dev kit, so we're going to come out for the Wii U possibly the 3DS as well. Uh, it's gonna come out for sure for the Xbox One. We have a dev kit for that. Working on acquiring uh, a dev kit for the PlayStation Network, so you know PS4, Vita, et cetera. Gonna green light this on Steam as well. Um, so it's gonna be pretty cool. So you can be able to download it. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty fun game to check out. The reason I wanna show you guys this video too is because it's part of the community. I'm really looking for feedback from you guys as well. So if you guys see anything that you think should be added or changed, by all means, let us know. This is a community project and we are uh, fans of classic games and that's the reason we're doing this. So without any further ado, let's check out Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayans. So here it is, first look at Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayans. Super excited about this game, guys. And just a trivia thing here, that logo is actually designed by Joe Simcoe, who's an artist for, for Topps Playing Cards, who's done a lot of the work for the Garbage Pail Kids line, which is kind of cool. This profile select uh, scene sampled by, of course, a classic game most of us will know, Zelda. Uh, in fact, a lot of this game, you'll notice, we take samples of games that we really like, like Zelda or Castlevania, Super Mario Brothers 2 even, and have sampled those games that we really like, even Mega Man, and put them into this game, which is really cool. Uh, you'll notice it's kind of dark initially, and uh, it's intentionally, uh, once you hit, hit a torch, which you need to light up the room, you should get 10 torches, as it's shown in the bottom right corner of the screen, the HUD. Uh, that's actually, uh, that's actually once you pass it, is your checkpoint. And there's several of those um, along the temple. There's mines that help you along the way. Here is a mine. It's gonna tell me to talk about the first god. There's gonna be six gods, and there's going to be two final bosses. This is Amuzin Cab. I'm really probably, probably butchering that name of this god, but that's actually a bee god. So, when researching this game, we actually did a lot of research on the Mayan culture itself. Uh, we did um, a lot of homework as far as what kind of gods they believed in. The whole premise of this game, the story is in the world, the Mayan calendar. I mean, Sydney's objective, his goal is to basically defeat all these six gods with two final bosses to save them in the world. Uh, there's various ways you can go about it, different paths you can take. There's gonna be around about 400 different screens in the game, so it's gonna be pretty significant in size. There's gonna be a lot of replay value because there's different ways you can go about uh, finding what you need. Every time you go to a different room, the torch actually goes down by one, as I'm demonstrating here. Once it gets down to, to one, it uh, actually goes dark and only light up when the flames go, which is kind of cool, as shown here. So it's, it's dark right now intentionally, I gotta find uh, a flame. So we'll go down the line, line here. You can still kind of see, it's just kind of harder to see without the torch. So you definitely need to find the torch. There's a whole bunch of uh, bricks that you can break and find different items. I do have a key uh, to unlock this white gate, and that's one thing you'll need to collect keys to do that. Uh, there's various enemies, we're gonna add a lot more in the game as well, all said and done. The object of this game, really when we, when we developed this game, we wanted to be ported to the NES, and we still do plan on porting this to the NES. Most likely that will, the NES port will probably come out in 2017 sometime, but most of the sprites right now are compatible. Um, here is a Scorpion. When you hit it once, it, it speeds up. We actually sampled that from uh, Super Mario Brothers, the arcade game, and when you hit those those uh, crabs, they speed up. That sprite right there for the ghost, that's actually a 16-bit sprite that will not work on NES, neither will the school. Uh, flames that you can actually hit with a whip and, and collect gems. The goal for the gems is important because you can use that money currency to purchase items from various mines along the way. And whether it's a map or, or, or elixirs, etc., you can purchase it. Kind of similar to uh, Zelda, actually. Uh, bombs are really important to collect too because you can use bombs to break away uh, various blocks to unlock certain passages along the way. If you don't kill the enemy, they do follow you in other rooms, so you, it's probably best to they kill the enemy when you see him. There's an elixir, that yellow, that actually increases your health meter. Pineapples give increase your health as well. So I, I do wanna say a big thank you to Russ, who is a programmer working on this for us. He's, he's doing a great job with this game. Uh, here is another Mayan. He tells you about this, this god called Kakulkin. Kakulkin actually is a, a god um, that's actually like a feathered serpent. Uh, Amozunka, which I mentioned before, that's actually a god who was actually in the game Smite, 
If you guys have played that, you may recognize his name. I'm going to use a bomb to break away one of these bricks. Go down here. Now, the, the bees currently are hovering around the hives. We're going to actually fix that where they start, when you walk by them, they're going to actually start attacking you to make it a little bit more challenging. I'll show you where the first area for the first uh, the first god is, and this is where he'll be. He's not currently programmed yet, but that's kind of where he'll be. And also regarding the NES port, NES is actually done in uh, four three aspect ratio, where this is sixteen by nine. So uh, again, the aspect ratio will be a little bit different, but sprite work it will work the same. In fact, when we were initially programming this game, it was going to be in uh, four three aspect ratio. Uh, we decided to change it to sixteen by nine because most games like Shovel Knight are in sixteen by nine, and I think it looks a bit more uh, modern for sure. So we'll use a bomb here to break away this brick, and this breaks away, so I can actually enter this room. There's another. Uh, Fire Flame. So back to Russ. Yes, Russ is a programmer and did a great job with this game. He's done a lot of research on the Mayan culture. Uh, couldn't do this game without him. He's putting literally hundreds of hours into programming this game. Another big thank you is to Keith, who is the creator of Sydney Hunter uh, character, and he's helped with a lot of the sprite work and art design. Uh, JF, who's my partner at Crime and Collector Vision Games, he's uh, done a lot of the layout for the maps. Uh, in fact, he's done a lot of layout for the maps for this game. Uh, Toby is another partner of mine at Collector Vision Games. He's helped out a lot with input. Uh, also, Ben is, help, is helping out with the music. The music is not on the loop, so right now it doesn't loop around, but the music will be in 18-bit form. That what you're hearing in this game is original music that Ben put together, but uh, it will just be in 18-bit form rather uh, than modern form it is, is currently. Uh, so big thank you to Ben. And Jason is programming this to uh, both the Genesis and Sega CD. So what we'll probably do is the Sega CD will have like the modern music, this kind of music, and then the Genesis will put like the you know 8-bit sound uh, to as well have enhanced audio for the Sega CD version. Maybe cutscenes, we'll, we'll see. I don't know, that's a ways away still. So right now our focus is on porting it to modern consoles right now. So I'll use the bomb to break away this passage. This kind of, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna try to find, I'm gonna show you where the boomerang is because the boomerang is a great helpful weapon. But in order to do that, you need to find certain keys to unlock it. And so I'll use a bomb here again to break away and without bombs, you can't do that necessarily. There's various ways you can actually select your weapons. You can select your weapon by hitting the R and L shoulder buttons. And in the middle HUD there in the bottom, that shows you which weapon is equipped. You can also uh, go to the main menu by hitting select and select it old school way like that. Uh, that green meter there is my health meter. Uh, it goes down to orange, then gets to red, which is my last hit. And then I'll eventually die. So you get basically three hits. Um, and then bottom left is how many lives I have. So that's kind of the HUD, uh, pretty straightforward. Watch out for these bees kind of fly randomly. So in some areas, these bees fly randomly. In other areas, they stick to the hive. We're definitely going to fix that. The auto death <laughs> when you hit flame or any spikes, just so you know. But fortunately, I had uh, a safe spot here. So we'll start from this point. Got to watch out for flame. So right now, I'm, I'm in the orange. I'm in the red. I'm not doing so hot. I need a pineapple or I can use, I can find an elixir to uh, increase my health as well. Here's the health meter there briefly. wait to get another bomb. Here's a pineapple that's gonna definitely help me out. We're gonna probably add more more uh, enemies. We'll have some snakes for sure and some other enemies. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts of other enemies maybe that we should add. Those those ghosts may or may not stay in the game. Those are actually from uh, Curse of the Mind or Capers of Death. These bricks as you break away can get, uh, there you go, another pineapple that helps. So now I'm in the orange, not the red so much anymore. You get a lot of gems in this game. In fact, uh, right now, probably currently too many. You get a lot of money. We're going to change that because uh, once you purchase things, we don't want to make it. You can just buy anything you want. We're going to make it a little bit more challenging. This game is going to be very challenging, but I think it's going to increase the replay value for uh, Sneak Hunter and the Curse of the Mines for sure. I need to get uh, a bomb. I just realized I need one more bomb. Let's go down here, break away here, get the bomb. It's been interesting working on this game and seeing it kind of develop over the year, over this past year, and seeing it from the first uh, build. This is actually build uh, 30 <laughs> to give you an idea. And we hope this game will plan on coming out in May of April, April or May uh, of next year. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before or not, but that's when we're shoot, playing on this game coming out. We added the, the waterfalls probably about a month ago with the sewers. I think that's a nice touch for sure. 
just adding more details to it just to make it look cool. We're definitely fans of old school graphics and stuff like that. The 8-bit, I think, is really a nice touch. We extend the whip. Initially, the whip was a little bit too short for us to extend the whip. There's a gray key. I don't need it necessarily right now. I'm going to save this spot right here so when if I do die, I can start from this point rather than opposed to just going back to where it was before. So I'll go ahead and do that. Automatic auto save, which is nice. And some other things like the flash there, you know, that's not necessarily going to be able to look like that on the NES. So there's some subtle things, but for the most part, the graphics and sprites will work on the NES. Uh, unlike games like, you know, even Mario, uh, Mega Man 9, that game won't work on the NES, just even though it may look like it may. Uh, you know, even like Shovel Knight obviously won't work on, on classic consoles. So it's definitely more challenging to port a game to the, the classic console opposed to modern console. But our business model at Clutter Vision Games is to work on new games for old consoles and then port those to new consoles as well. So it's kind of something we're working on and I'm part of. Uh, initially, we started off uh, porting homebrew games for the ColecoVision console, hence the name Collector Vision. And then we've worked on uh, games for the Intellivision, Atari 2600, the NES, uh, working on some couple Super Nintendo games, among others. So it's pretty exciting. It's kind of fun to work on these games, but the limitations are much more challenging uh, for sure. And just quite frankly, the audience is it's much more uh, niche market to port games to classic consoles. So I have all the keys here. Uh, we're going to break this way in the next room. I'll, I'll get my boomerang. i to watch out for these these bees. I'll get you. And there it is, a boomerang. Even even the artwork, like the, the skulls there, we've actually taken those skulls. We looked at images from the Mayan culture, and uh, we've actually sampled those images and applied them to put them in 8-bit form. <laughs> so just the little details I think a lot of people may not know about, we actually uh, we, we pay attention to those those details. So now that I have my boomerang, it's, it definitely increases my my length of a weapon or save it right there, which is nice. These all break away for, for special items. I'm gonna take you to the first first god. And the first god, you'll, you'll, you'll probably recognize him. He's there for a sprite filler, uh, essentially. And then we're gonna add the sprites and, and fill them in. So we're not gonna use the what the god looks like currently, but you're gonna laugh when you see him because you may recognize him from from a game that's pretty popular. Oh, I need some pineapple. There you go. I got it. And the reason this pineapple is uh, gives you health is another trivia thing is actually Keith, who's created City Hunter, is Studio Pina is his, his studio. And that's uh, Spanish for pineapple. So <laughs> that's the reason that we use pineapple. So I got a, an elixir, green elixir, which is going to help me uh, get health. So notice I go from today being sweaty and nervous to now I'm okay because I drank the elixir. So... That, that's that's cool. The port I'm playing here is actually uh, built on the, for the Wii U. It's going to come out for the Wii U, and uh, as I mentioned before, and then we just got a Xbox uh, One uh, dev system, and we're reporting on that from Unity. These scorpions can be kind of challenging. The good thing about the boomerang is it has a lot of length, but if it's it goes far out. You can't use it twice, so it gets kind of challenging because you're kind of exposed to a point when it is further from you. We're getting close to the first god. Again, you can go actually go up here and get some more items. And when, when we're actually building this game, what we do is we create the, the graphics and sprites first, and then Russ goes in there as a programmer and kind of puzzles it all together based on uh, the layout that JF sends him, which is kind of cool. So it's kind of like a puzzle. So there's a lot of similar sprites and like you'll see the you know, the flames and stuff. And it's just basically it's kind of like, think of like uh, Mario Maker, <laughs> basically kind of like that uh, for this game. So get some pineapples. Here's, here's the first god. You'll notice him right away. You're going to laugh. He's Quick Man from Mega Man 2. So we're going to fill, like as I said before, we're going to fill him in uh, as a different sprite. But it will give you an idea as far as the play mechanics for the boss battles. There's going to be six total, plus two final gods that you have to, to fight. He's almost easier to defeat with Whip, to be honest with you, but I'll, I'll defeat him with the boomerang here. And he is a bee god, so he's releasing bees. We kind of discussed maybe doing something like similar like Mega Man, where you get like the ability once you defeat a god, so maybe like Sydney will have like bees that you can use for weapons. I don't know, it's still kind of a... 
a wait and see. I'm not sure if we'll end up doing that or not. So you know, every time we play this, we get ideas and we add. <laughs> it's kind of a, a work in progress. So I think the final version of City Hunter and the Cursed Minds will, will look different than this. Not by too much, but uh, it will certainly, certainly evolve. And, you know, we've got a bug test, which is which can be challenging too. Especially, that's that's probably the biggest challenging important games to classic consoles like the NES is the bugs. Because, you know, with modern consoles, you can actually patch it up pretty easily. Uh, old school consoles, it's burnt to the ROM board. It's there for good. <laughs> We're doing a Sydney Hunter uh, game for uh, Super Nintendo called Caverns of Death. Same character, completely different game. That's coming out for the Super Nintendo, Dreamcast, other consoles. Uh, this is... Um, kind of it's the same character but different game basically more or less so this is kind of cool so kind of shadow of the Colossus style when you defeat a god uh the it actually the statue crumbles and it shows you kind of the progression of the room and this mind will kind of explain to you what this room is so it's a calendar room the hab which is actually this mind term for calendar and uh the way hab is actually there's it's there's 18 months in the mind calendar 20 days in each month and there's a five day way hab a month which is only five days and that's the what's this way he's talking about here five days and he's kind of perturbed because there's a there's a guest visiting this room and it's unlucky whatever so again subtle things that we research and we, we you know the culture and uh, that a lot of people may not kind of may overlook but kind of cool nonetheless and this next room is um in the merchant store so he says right now uh there's any deals but we're actually working on that, that part of it and uh, here's a screenshot of what that uh Will look like it will be sent very similar to to zelda where you can purchase three items at a time you know you have to choose and can walk up to the item whatever here is a simple second temple uh and this is a new temple that we've been working on you can see it's, it's different and a lot of greenery a lot of water uh, one thing we're gonna add is when you jump in the water there's gonna be a, still be a splash and yeah, which is cool and there's no swim mechanic right now currently in the game so when you go into water it works the same as if you're above water but that's something we are Still going to work on, and it, I mean, might do it like Sonic the Hedgehog, where you can just hold his breath for a certain amount of time and have like air bubbles to help him out, like Sonic style. Uh, may do it even like Mario Brothers style, where he'll swim around. Uh, not really sure. I think we're leaning towards possibly doing like a Sonic style, but he'll be up. There'll be fish and other enemies that we're going to add in here. There's some more uh, keys. So you can see, you know, we obviously have a lot more work to do for this game, uh, but. We're, we're pretty far along and we're really excited uh, about this game when it comes out. It'll be a DLC, of course, although eventually we we'll hope to have some kind of physical format for the Wii U or for uh, you know, PS4, or Xbox One. Kind of like uh, Shovel Knight just came out in physical copy, but in order for that to happen, we would certainly need uh, the demand for physical copy because that certainly gets pretty expensive to do that with distribution and all that good stuff. So. Uh, let me know what you guys think of City Hunter and uh, the Curse of Mayans, guys. I really appreciate you guys' feedback. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to stay in touch, I really I encourage you guys to follow Hunter Vision Games. I actually just recently started uh, a YouTube channel, so I'll put a link below for that. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, so those are great ways to just stay connected with the like, various projects we're working on. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.